I'm going to take you through a tutorial today on how to use your pen tool and your Pathfinder panel with the divide function to create a low res poly image of a piece of fruit. I'm going to use an orange. Feel free to choose your own piece of fruit. Today I'm going to show you quite quickly but you can put as much detail into your image as you like. So what we need to start off with is a new file. Um, I've started off with a, an A4 landscape document um, with one artboard. So you can see here I have placed a picture of an orange on my artboard. The first thing I'd like to do is come over to my layers panel and with my linked file I'm actually going to lock that. This means now that when I'm drawing over the top it's not going to shift about on me. I'd like to make a new layer on top. This is going to be my working layer and start off with my pen tool. I'd like to start off with a black stroke. Um, just means that if there's no fill and just a stroke I can easily see where I've drawn without um, the shape being filled and not being able to see underneath. We don't want to do any Bezier curves so that means that with my pen tool all I'm doing is dropping anchor points. So it's click and drop, click and drop. Now it doesn't need to be really accurate, the idea is you're making geometric shapes. So just come around the outside of your piece of fruit and just generally where the edge is, um, click some straight lines. I'm going to come right round and you'll see in a moment a little circle come up, that means I'm closing the path. So I'd like one path, I'm actually going to also come around inside the orange rind where it goes from orange to white with the pith because uh, I think that'll give us just a little bit more oh, you can see I've got a tiny bezier curve there I'll move that because I just want it to be flat this will just give us more of a chance to have um, different shades within our drawing within our illustration So take your time with this, I'm doing mine reasonably quickly, I'm going to come around and go along the edge of the orange, inside of the orange now, take as long as you need. So now I've got um, a few shapes in there that I've created with my pen tool and now I'm going to go crisscrossing over the top um, to create the different sort of prism effects. Now I'd actually like to do that on a new layer, it just makes it a little bit easier um, to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to toggle the lock onto the layer that I was on, create a new layer on top and I'll just be doing paths crisscrossing over. Now I'll probably speed this bit up. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to go too over the top with too many shapes. Um, it looks a bit peculiar now, but as you'll see, when we go to the Pathfinder tool, each of these separate areas we have here will become separate shapes that we can colour. I'm going to toggle off the lock. I'm going to select all of my lines that I've made so far. 
and I'm going to come over to my Pathfinder. Now if your Pathfinder panel is not already out, I'll just close this to show you where it is. You come up to Window, Pathfinder. Now within Pathfinder there's quite a few nifty little things that you can try out. Today we're using the Divide function which will make each of these separate um, spaces into separate shapes. So once I click this, uh, it makes each of these into separate shapes within a group. So I'll just show you by double clicking in here and as you can see now when I click these shapes they're all separate and that's what the divide function has done for me. So now I can go through my right mouse button click and ungroup them and I can now select each shape and colorize it and I'll do use the um, eyedropper tool for that and it's quite handy I can actually toggle between so I'm going to have my um, so direct selection tool and my eyedropper tool. So I'll select a shape, go to my eyedropper tool and use the eyedropper tool. Now I can toggle between them by holding down command and my direct selection tool will pop up. When I let go of command it goes back to my eyedropper. So this is quite a handy way of going through. Now this is a really long process so I'll, we will speed this section up for you. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit trickier for me to select the um, black outlines. So there's a few different things that I can do at this point. I can keep kind of going through and trying to grab them. Um, but because of the hierarchy, it does become quite tricky to get some of these ones that are sitting in behind other shapes. So I can come down to my layers panel. I'm just going to pull this layers panel out. And if you don't have your layers panel... Um, available. It's up here in Window Layers. Now you can see in my Layers panel it has all the different shapes that have been created and it's a bit easier to see in here um, which ones haven't been coloured yet because they're these little black shapes here. So I've got my ones that I've already coloured into the oranges and the creams um, and I can actually select these paths by toggling um, this circle here. So I can see that this is a tiny shape in there and then I can colour that. And again I can grab this one and colour that. So I could go through my whole document and change them that way. Um, and that's quite an effective way of going through. Another way would be to select this. And I can come up to here to select select same stroke color and now every single one that has not been colored is now selected so I could do one of two things I could group them so that I know that they're on a group I could bring them to the front which I, I might do that first so arrange 
spring to front uh, and now they're already a bit easier to access. What I'm actually going to do is because I have enough gradients of the orange um, already chosen from my reference image, I'm actually going to just switch this over so um, the black stroke becomes a black fill. And it's just then a bit easier for me to see and select and change the colour. Now I'm going to um, go around, you can see now that's a bit easier to select. And then with my eyedropper tool, instead of choosing a colour from the orange below, I can actually just choose a colour from somewhere else within my image, uh, within the drawing that I've already done. have a few little bits left and they're quite small so to get these last few I'm just going to select one come back up to select same this time fill color because I want all the ones that have a black fill and now I'm just going to make these all the same color now let's have a look so over in my layers panel I'll just collapse this um, illustration that we've done I'm going to toggle off the visibility of our linked file that's our reference image and it's just not quite the colour I'd like them to be, so I'm going to select um, this one, this one here, 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 those two, and probably make them a darker orange. Yeah. Excellent. So there we have it. We've made a low-res poly image of an orange. We've used our pen tool. We've used our pathfinder tool with a divide function. Uh, we've used our eyedropper tool, our direct selection tool. We've also used um, our select same function, which is really handy. And we've had a bit of a play with how we can locate things within our layers panel. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you enjoy making low-poly fruit. Thanks.